this video will only focus on the events that occurred up until the end of the anime's first season. So much of what came after in the manga, as well as anything we know about season 2, will be completely untouched in this video. Basically, if you haven't seen all of season 1, you should probably click off to avoid spoilers. Fans who have watched both the English and Japanese versions of Attack on Titan may have noticed a small change regarding the equipment used by humanity in their fight against the Titans. In the Japanese version, the equipment is known as 3D Maneuvering Gear. However, when it came to the series English dubbing, the name was instead changed to Omnidirectional Mobility Gear or ODM. This left many fans wondering why the people over at Funimation would make a seemingly unnecessary change. It was eventually revealed by Mike McFarland, voice actor for Jean, that the name was actually given to them when they acquired rights to the series, and that they had no involvement in its change. Another interesting difference regarding translations involves the series' official name. When you look at the kanji that makes it up, a more accurate English translation would probably be something like Advancing Giants, as Attack on Titan doesn't really make much sense when you stop to think about it, at least grammatically. The same could also be said for its Japanese title, as the way it is written can be misinterpreted as referring to a place or person named Titan who are advancing or launching an attack. Shingeki is also a very specific term meaning a military advancement or charge on an enemy, so using it in this manner only simplifies its meaning. Currently, the name choice remains sort of a mystery. You may remember near the very end of the anime's first opening credits, a soldier can be seen doing a backflip using his 3D maneuver gear. Because of his similar appearance, many fans of Attack on Titan identified the character to be Jean. It was later explained, however, that this was not the case, and that the person was just meant to be an anonymous representation of humanity as a whole. However, the production staff liked this idea so much that they simply ended up deeming it to be true, and they even added him doing a similar maneuver in episode 18 when he engages the female titan. Depending on when you're watching this video, Season 2 of the Attack on Titan anime may or may not have yet been released. If you are watching this before its release, well then you're probably already familiar with both its anime openings. However, there is actually a third opening sequence that not a lot of fans are aware even exists. And no, I'm not talking about that Attack on Titan Junior High crap. It can be seen in the show's second OVA and is a heavily altered version of the very first anime opening, meant to revolve around the character Jean, who serves as the main character. I swear with how many times we've already mentioned him in this video, we should have just dedicated the whole thing to him. Eren and Mikasa are placed in some pretty minor roles, while Armin plays as a supporting character. I found it to be a pretty funny episode in my opinion, so if you haven't already checked it out for yourself, I highly recommend you do so. Something else that I found kind of interesting, however, are some of the scenes that occurred within this episode. As Hajime Isayama was drawing the Attack on Titan manga, he for whatever reason decided it'd be funny to include a few fake previews at the very end of certain manga volumes, usually to trick fans into believing that something rather insane was going to happen in the upcoming volume. Of course, none of them ever did, however, five of the eight fake previews were featured within this OVA. When he is drawing the Titans, Hajime Isayama likes to use a reference book with a variety of different facial expressions. Along with this, many of the ones you see within the series are actually based off people Isayama knows in real life. He is also known to take requests from time to time and has even made an appearance in episode 2, in the form of a Titan. The idea for the Titans themselves came to him after he encountered a drunk customer while working at an internet cafe. He has stated that his inability to have communicated with them made him realize that the most familiar and scary of all animals in the world are actually human beings. I know I already said I wasn't going to include anything relating to the events that take place after the anime's first season, but this one was too good for me to just leave out. And seeing as how it doesn't necessarily spoil any of the story, which is what I wanted to avoid in the first place, I don't really see much reason not to include it. In chapter 57 of the manga, a secret message can be seen appearing on one of the panels. It can be seen written down on a piece of paper, however it is flipped upside down. This message is meant to be a lewd version of the Japanese children's song's Guchoki Pa. The uh, translations for it are up on the screen. 
There was actually a one-shot manga crossover between Attack on Titan and Marvel's The Avengers, titled Attack on Avengers. It was a short 8-page work, but was actually written by Hajime Isayama himself, and published in the Japanese magazine Brutus, featuring Spider-Man, The Avengers, and even the Guardians of the Galaxy, all trying to fight off the Titans who have mysteriously invaded New York. I actually debated including this one in my references video, however since it is technically a collaboration, I felt as though it isn't so much a reference, but rather a part of the Attack on Titan universe, canon or not. So for those wondering why it wasn't in there, there you go. Aside from comics though, there is also an Attack on Titan theme park, figurines which were sold at prices upwards of $1200, and even a line of Attack on Titan perfume, for when you wanna, you know, give off that I also like to live dangerously stench. With the release of the second guidebook titled Outside, majority of the Attack on Titan characters were finally given official birthdays. What's interesting about this however is Marco Bot was given a birthday of June 16th. For those who weren't aware, June 16 just happens to be the day directly in the middle of the year. This is somewhat ironic as in episode 13, Marco is found dead with only half of his body remaining. There is also a running gag in the series regarding the character Krista, in which people often tend to refer to her as a goddess. The first time this can be seen is in episode 3 after she gives Sasha, aka Potato Girl, some food. The second time is in episode 18 when she appears to rescue Armin, John, and Raynor, who had just managed to escape from the female titan. This is even portrayed in one of the joke previews mentioned earlier in the video where she is depicted as an angel in her titan form. There are many hints which point that the series may actually take place within Germany. For starters, the layout for the walls which protects humanity is inspired by a town named Nordlingen. Not too sure how you pronounce that. Many of the characters' last names also have German origins, and the first line sung in the anime's first opening theme song is also in German. Mikasa's name was based off a warship of the Imperial Japanese Navy. Isayama has said that he believed that series with female characters named after warships had a likely chance of succeeding. The line in the series which states she is worth 1,000 soldiers is taken from the Tales of Heike, where it was used to describe a legendary female Japanese warrior named Tomoe Gozen. In the manga, her scarf was a much darker color but was instead changed to red when the series was being animated. This may possibly be a reference to the Red String of Fate, which is a Japanese folklore that represents an unbreakable connection between soulmates or lovers. Levi Short Height was inspired by Mai Adams' Astro Boy and Kyuzo from the film The Seven Samurai. His design and personality was modeled after Rorschach from Watchmen and his name was inspired by someone from the American documentary Jesus Camp. Erwin was also based off a character from Watchmen known as Ozymandias. However, another influence for his character was Erwin Rommel, a military commander of Nazi Germany during World War II. Aside from their first names, they are both connected by the date October 14, which was Rommel's death and Erwin's birth. Isayama also revealed that the Pixis was modeled after General Yoshifuro Akiyama, a general in the Imperial Japanese Army. This actually caused a lot of controversy and resulted in him receiving many death threats. Eren's Titan form was based off the Japanese martial artist Yushin Okami, while the Armored Titan was based off American wrestler Brock Lesnar. Some other interesting names include France's name, which is remarkably similar to Franz Kafka, a Czech writer considered to be one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. They both also share a lover with the last name Diamond. Samuel Lynx Jackson is possibly a reference to the American actor Samuel L. Jackson. And even the two captured Titans Sony and Bean, which is meant to reference Alexander Sony Bean, who was head of a clan responsible for mass murder and cannibalization of over 1,000 people. After his battle to retrieve Eren from the female Titan, Captain Levi returns home with an injured leg and is for the most part not very active in the operation to capture Annie, other than that little bit near the end. From the time he returns back to the end of episode 25, he can be seen wearing a black jacket. According to Isayama, the jacket is usually worn by someone else, 
but he wanted to convey the feeling that Levi was going to be taking time off. Something so symbolic yet so minor that I'm almost certain it went over the heads of even the most hardcore of Attack on Titan fans. Despite having a female actor in both the live action film and anime adaptation, Han Jesui's gender has technically never been revealed, and currently remains a mystery. This probably sounds strange, I know, but maybe not so much if you've stuck around my channel for a while now. You see, in the Japanese language, it's not that uncommon for someone to refer to another person without the use of gender-specific pronouns, something that would be considered odd or rather offensive in the English language. This is the case for Hanji, as in the manga it's pretty difficult to tell what gender he or she is just going off their design. Isayama has even gone so far as to tell those in charge of the US adaptation to not confirm any specific gender, thus leaving it up to the readers to decide. I'm curious to see what you guys think about this, so in the comment section down below I've left two options you can thumbs up, vote up the one you think is correct. And lastly, I have a bit of a bonus entry for you, one of which was brought to my attention by one of my subscribers. Apparently there is a certain hairstyle in anime dubbed the Hair of Death, which when paired up with a character playing a mother role, it'll most likely mean they're going to die. Looking into it, I find it pretty funny how accurate this actually is, and the fact I've never noticed it before. But don't worry, I won't be naming off any examples, as I don't want to spoil the death of any anime characters from other series. <coughs> <clears throat> oh come on, if you didn't know she was dead then you've clearly never watched the first episode of Full Metal Alchemist. It's really nothing that surprising. It's also probably just coincidence, but they both happen to share the same Japanese voice actor. And there you have it guys, 10 or maybe 11 things you miss in Attack on Titan, possibly? Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new from it. After I learned that Season 2 is going to be dropping sometime this April, I have been getting myself pumped up by rewatching the whole series and of course making videos on it. It's definitely gonna be lit. And if there is a specific anime series you would like me to make a video on, be sure to leave me your suggestions down there as well. Also, I haven't made a video dedicated to it, but thank you guys for 50,000 subscribers. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna do one. I can't really think of what to do, but maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see. But with that being said, guys, I will thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.